inside and welcome to my dragon inspired design set workshop. In this workshop we're going to be using some chroming and also a little bit of flat 3D work. I really hope you guys enjoy this workshop so let's get started. Welcome to my dragon inspired design set workshop so I've already prepared these three tips and I've done a full scale effect on this nail with a little bit of basic crystal placement and on this nail I've done the scale effect again um, again with a little bit of basic crystal placement but just on a quarter as a diagonal on this nail so with this central nail I'm going to show you how to create that scale effect. So what I have done is gone in with two coats of my evergreen, which is from the Opulence collection. And if you were doing this on a client, you will have done your prep, your base, and then two coats of your color. And then on top of that, I have gone in with my material gel, which is our beautiful matte top coat to give this beautiful matte finish. So what I'm going to do now is grab my I'd rather be shiny which is our no wipe top coat and I'm going to pop a little bit of that down to create the scale effect so I'm going to go in with my dotting tool now you can use a brush for this but a dotting tool is probably the easiest way to go and I'm going to create this scale effect now I'm going to do this over the entirety of the nail even though some of it is going to get covered up. So I'm popping in a line first and then I'm going in and creating a diamond effect. But by no means do these lines have to be crisp. I think it adds to the effect to have them a little bit higgledy-piggledy because it adds to that scale effect. So I'm just working down this central part first of all and creating that diamond effect so you can see that difference between the shiny and the matte. And then in between each of those I'm going to create another diamond just working vertically down the nail. So working all the way down, grabbing a new dot of my top coat for each scale because that means we're not going to run out and not forgetting the half scale at the top there. Now obviously if you're doing this on a client you don't want to be having any contact with their cuticle side walls because we do not want to overexpose the client so just be super careful when you're coming in on that area. And now I'm going in on the other side being careful to leave that slight gap in between each of these scales so that that green shows through once we come to put our chrome on so again just working my way down working methodically so that we don't miss any areas out Again, working next to this side wall area, we need to be really careful not to have any contact. And then once you are happy with all of your scales and their placement, we are going to go into the lamp for a full cure, which is 60 seconds. So I'm going to pop that into the lamp. And while that's in there, I'm going to grab the chromes. So the chromes that I'm using today, I'm using the classic chromes and the firecracker palette. Okay, so from the classic chromes, I'm going to use my flat gold rather than my holographic gold, which is down here, which is quite a yellow gold. And then from firecracker, I'm going to use this bronzed copper. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to grab my applicator okay and I'm going to go into my yellow gold first of all and just grab a little bit of that now you could go over this whole thing with one color but I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to this okay so I'm going to go in on each scale just on the left hand side and just dab this chrome on the left hand side of each scale 
So just working again nice and methodically so that we don't miss any of those scales out. And don't worry if there's any gaps because we are going to go in and sort that out in a second. So now I'm going to go into my burnt copper and I'm going to go on the right side of each scale. So just literally dab that on onto the right side. And this will just help to give our scales a little bit more depth rather than just being a flat colour. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over this and just give it a little bit of a rub and that's going to burnish our chromes into that top coat, which is why it's really important that we put that matte top coat underneath because by doing that, it's going to stop any of that chrome sticking to that beautiful green that we've got underneath. And of course, you can use different colorways for this. You could go purple, you could go red, you could go black. But you can see how by using those two different chromes that we've created a more three-dimensional look. Okay, so now what I'm going to do I'm going to grab my I'd rather be shiny and I'm going to go in and give this a full coating and if we were doing this on a client you want to steer clear of their cuticle sidewalls and also make sure that you cap that free edge. So once that has had a nice even coating that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure. So now what we're going to do is create an eye on this nail. So I'm going to go in with my Innocence and I'm going to pop a little bit of that down and give myself the outline of the eye. And this is just going to give us a guideline. And to do that, I am going to use my 10 mil liner brush. Okay, because that's going to help to get the, the corners of our eye nice and crisp. <coughs> okay, so this has now had a full cure and now we're going to pop our eye in. So we are going to cover up a few of these scales, but I wanted that consistency throughout the entirety of the nail. Okay, so I'm going to pop my central point in first of all and this eye is going to be at an angle so I'm going to come in and just do a really basic eye shape a bit like a rugby ball I am going to make it quite large okay bring that all the way around and then I'm going to fill in this area just here and bring that in to a taper making sure that our edges are nice and crisp okay and then that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure Now, what I want to do on here is to create a red eye. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use my firecracker chrome again, okay? And I'm going to use this fuchsia pink and this beautiful red chrome. I do apologize, I love this red chrome, as you can see, and I have used quite a lot of it. <coughs> so I'm going to grab another applicator just because I don't want that transfer of gold going into my red. Okay, and we've got this outline here. So I'm gonna go in to that fuchsia and just pick up a little bit because I need to concentrate this into the area that I want. So I'm gonna come in that central zone and just dab this in 
okay and be really nice and precise with your application and then I'm going to go in with my red and blend that into my pink like so so we've created a bit of an ombre going on with that red and pink I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and again create that ombre okay so I have got a little bit of excess chrome there so I'm just going to remove that like so <coughs> and then we're going to go in with our no wipe top coat again and I'm just going to pop a little bit of that down because we have already top coated the background so we don't need to worry about top coating that and I'm just going to come in around this eye area and you can see how that really makes that chrome pop and I'm just using my go-to brush to do this and then I'm going to fill in the rest of that central area of this eye okay so once we've done that that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure <coughs> and then i'm going to go in with my black gel paint to be able to create that pupil of the eye so to do that i'm going to use my a five mil liner brush so it's super small and also it's got that beautiful tapered edge to be, to be able to create that nice crisp line alternatively you can use your 10 mil so now what I'm going to do now that has had a full cure I'm going to go into my black gel paint now you can use a uh, gel polish for this, but a black gel paint is gonna help to give you a much crisper line. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up through the central part, like so. I'm gonna turn this now ever so slightly, and if I was doing this on a client, I would 100% turn their finger to make it easier for myself. And then we're going to do another rugby ball shape in the center we don't want to go rounded we want it to stay tapered at the ends okay and now I'm going to go in and fill in this central area here making sure that we've got that consistency right the way to the edge. So I'm now gonna pop that in the lamp and it's really important that you do a full cure on this. So a full cure for our gel paints are 60 seconds, okay? So I'm just gonna get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And then I'm gonna grab out my gem buddy. So this we normally use for um, crystal applications. So it's perfect for your flat backs, pointed backs, and also caviar beadwork. But I'm going to use this today to create a 3D effect on this eye. So I'm going to go in with my dotting tool because I want quite a lot of gem buddy to be able to go on top of this. And this is why it's super important that you have that full cure on that gel paint because we need to make sure that every single layer in between this because it's going to get sandwiched with our gem buddy on top we need to make sure that everything underneath is fully fully cured okay so this has now had a full cure and I'm going to go in I'm going to grab my gem buddy on the end of my dotting tool and I'm going to pop it 
right on the center of the eye okay so you can see there but i want even more than that so i'm going to grab some more and i'm going to pop it down and then create a bit of a swirl on top so you can see i've got quite a lot on there so now i'm going to use my gem buddy five mil brush and I'm going to start to tease this out so if you've got any air bubbles in there this is the time to tease them out so I'm teasing it one side and then teasing it to the other side and then I want that height to be mainly in the center of this eye so I'm just very gently hardly touching it teasing this gem buddy out to that outer edge of the eye so all the way down making sure that it is sitting exactly where we want it if there's any air bubbles just pop your brush into it and bring them out to the surface like so and then once you're happy with that okay I'm going to turn it upside down because this is going to want to self level so I want to bring that dome shape round to the highest point of this eye and once you're happy with that get it straight in the lamp for a full cure now because this gem buddy is quite thick a normal cure for crystal placement would be 60 seconds in an led lamp but because we have done this nice and thick i'm going to do it for a two minute cure just to be on the safe side okay so i'm just going to pop my gem buddy away and then i'm going to pop a little bit of my evergreen down because to leave it like this it would look quite unfinished because we need to give our dragon an eyelid so i've just put my evergreen down <clears throat> and then i'm going to go in with my 10 mil liner brush because it's got that lovely taper on the end there and it's going to help us to get that nice crisp line on top of the eye so our gem buddy is now fully cured and I just want to wipe off just to make sure it's nice and clean and ready for our detail work that we're going to pop on top of there. So I'm just going to get rid of that. There we go. And make sure that that gel residue wipe off solution has evaporated. So I'm going to go in with my 10 mil on that evergreen and we're going to create an eyelid now so i'm going to fully load up my brush and i'm going to come in here and then taper out so all the way to that corner and then i want to create that join so we don't want any of this red or fuchsia chrome to be poking out underneath behind this eye okay so coming all the way round, making sure that we've got that nice seamless transition to that corner and a nice crisp line on that eyelid and then the same on the underside. So starting in the center and then pulling it out to that taper. Same on this side, pulling it out to the taper and then making sure that we close in any of those gaps like so.
Okay, so I'm gonna pop that into the lamp now, again, for a full cure, but because this is normal gel polish, it means that it is only a 30 second cure. And then because this is a normal gel polish, we haven't necessarily got that high pigmentation that we have in our gel paint. It is highly pigmented, but because we've got those strong colors underneath that black and that chrome, it means that you may well need a second coat, but it does very much depend on the color that you are using. So again, <clears throat> I'm just gonna come in and give that a second coat, which you will be much quicker at because you've already done that base layer of the eyelid. Let's bring that round again, starting in the center and then tapering that out. I did this effect for a Halloween set as the eye from Hocus Pocus on the smell book. Oh my goodness, it was insane. It looks so cool. Okay, so again, in for a full cure, which again is only 30 seconds because this is a normal gel polish. And like I say, you can do this in purples, in blacks, in greys, and greens. You could go even have a girly dragon and go pinks and purples and light blues. It's entirely up to you. So once that has fully cured, there is one last thing we need to do and that is to give this eye a nice high shine. So you can go in with the brush from your bottle, but I want to make sure that it's nice and concentrated in the area that I want it. So I'm gonna use my go-to brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that I'd rather be shiny and come in and pop it over those areas that we have just done making sure that we take it all the way down to that edge I'm doing my outline first and then going in over the rest of the eye, so just filling in that negative space. Now, if you have got a bit of a lumpy transition, you can 100% bring that back up and over because we've already done this as a top coat, but you can smooth out that transition from the eye onto the rest of the nail if you so wish. And then you can be 100% sure that you've covered all of the areas that you need to cover. And there you have it, our dragon eye. So I'm gonna pop that into the lamp for a full cure. And just show you the other two again in a little bit more detail. So for this full cover scale nail, I have used exactly the same te technique as we used in the eye nail, okay? But I've just done a little bit of crystal placement with that red, because I think it ties in beautifully with the red eye. And we've got that chrome, that two-tone chrome going on on those scales. And then for this one, Again, I used exactly the same technique. I've used evergreen here, but I have kept that matte because I really like the contrast between the shiny and the matte. And then again, we have just done a line of those beautiful red crystals, which are all from Crystal Parade. And then I've used my black caviar beads to fill in my gaps and finish off that crystal placement. And then to finish off the whole design set, we have got our beautiful dragon eye. So there you have it. So it's nice and 3D, but it is still nice and flat. So it's also nice and smooth. So you haven't got any areas that are gonna catch 
for your clients. So if your client's not madly in love with that 3D effect, it's still nice and smooth. So nothing's gonna catch for them. And you can see how putting that gem buddy on there with that top coat has refracted that light beautifully from that fuchsia and that red from that firecracker chrome. So there you have it, our completed dragon inspired set. I really hope you guys enjoyed this workshop and if you did, please make sure you click the subscribe button and if you want to see any future workshops, just click them down below. Thank you as always so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.